Welcome back, everybody. We're going to shift our focus a little bit here in Chapter 1, where we have been working with measuring segments and distances recently, whether with the ruler postulate or with the distance formula. We're going to go now and switch our focus to angles rather than segments. And you can see that Section 1.4 is about measuring and classifying angles. Two goals in this section are these, that first, you will be able to measure, name, and classify angles. And that's what this video is going to discuss. And then the second video that you're going to see a little bit later on is going to be about you being able to use the angle addition postulate in order to find unknown angle measures. All right, well, let's focus on goal number one for now. And of those three things that we're going to do in goal one, measuring, naming, and classifying angles, we're going to start off with talking about how you name an angle. All right, now we've talked about how you name segments and rays and lines, that kind of thing. And there was very specific notation that went along with it. Well, same thing is true whenever you name an angle. There's notation that goes along with it that you've got to get correct. And there's just a certain structure to the names that you've got to understand as well. All right. Now, you see this angle right here that has, well, a couple of key parts that we need to make sure we know of. And actually, let me give a definition while we're at it. All an angle is is this. It's simply two rays that have a common initial point. Two rays that have a common initial point. So you see that I have two rays here. I've got a ray B, B A and I've got a ray B C. All right, and they share initial point B. Now whenever you're trying to think about the rays, the uh, sorry the angle, each of those sides, each of those rays is called a side of the angle. So there's a side, there's another side right there, and that common initial point that the two rays have for an angle is referred to as the vertex. All right, so very key things that you have to know right there. Now we can go back and talk about how you actually name an angle now that you know what the sides and the vertex are. Now if I asked you what you consider to be the most important point on an angle, I hope that you would agree that the vertex seems to be the most important point because that's where the two sides come together, isn't it? And so the Vertex of the angle is key whenever you're naming an angle. In fact, it's possible to name an angle simply by naming its vertex in many cases. And this angle is one of those cases. Um, we could just call this simply angle B. All right, so angle B, just a vertex. Now notice a little symbol right there. Whenever you're trying to name an angle, then you always use that little symbol followed by the vertex or one of a few, couple other possibilities. Now. Another way of naming an angle, which is necessary many times, is to name it using three points rather than just the vertex. Now, when would you need to use three points? Well, let's suppose I had more than one angle that had this vertex B, such as this. Okay, so I just made up another ray there at the same vertex B. Now, if I refer to angle B, it's not very specific because, well, here's an angle right here that has a vertex at B. There's the original angle that we had that has a vertex at B. And then there's the larger angle here that has its vertex as B. And so if I just call it angle B, which of those three things am I referring to? So not sufficient, at least not all the time. So the other way that you can name an angle is this. You can name it by picking a point from one side of the angle and then the vertex and another point, a point from the other side of the angle, such as this. I could call this angle ABC. All right, a point from a side, then the vertex, and then a point from another side. And very key here, you always have to put the vertex in the middle whenever you're trying to name an angle using three letters. Always the vertex goes in the middle. Now, it wouldn't have mattered if I said it was angle ABC or angle CBA. That would be another valid name for this angle. Make sense? And let's suppose for a second that there wasn't just one point on each side of the angle. Let's suppose I had this point G that was on ray BA. Well, that suddenly gives me more ways of naming the angle. Now, instead of calling it angle ABC, if I wanted to name it using three points, I could call it angle GBC, for instance. All right, just one point from this side then the vertex, then one point from this side is all that's required. And you can, of course, then go angle CBG as well if you wanted to. 
So that's how you measure an angle. Vertex, the most important point in naming an angle. So you know how to name an angle now. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back from naming to measuring. Measuring angles. Now you probably know that you measure an angle in degrees and all that good stuff. What I want to do here is show you how you would measure an angle with your protractor. And I'm leading up to using what your textbook calls the protractor postulate. Not just what your textbook calls, but what is called the protractor postulate. Now, the protractor postulate has to do with the way that you measure an angle with a protractor. It's kind of related to that. So let's put a protractor on the screen right here. And let's talk about how you can use a protractor in order to measure an angle. And this is the way, hopefully, you've been taught in your geometry class. Whenever you're measuring an angle, what you're going to do is, first of all, you're going to take that protractor right here, and you're going to have to line it up a certain way. And the way that you're going to line it up is by, first of all, putting the vertex of the angle kind of at the center of the compass, or sorry, of the protractor, if you will. So there's point B. In this case, you kind of got like a little crosshairs right there. And you can see that's kind of where all the markers that have a number line up at. All right. Very key that you put the vertex there. And then the other thing that you're customarily told to do whenever you're measuring an angle with a protractor is to take one of the sides, either this one or this one, and line that side up along with the bottom line on your protractor so that that side of the angle goes through the zero. And that's really an easy way to measure an angle because if one of the two sides of the angle goes through the zero, then all you've got to do is look at the other side of the angle and what number it passes through in order to determine what the measure of the angle is. Although, there can be some confusion with that because aren't there two numbers that this is going through? Now, if you're looking at the top part of the protractor right here, that's about 126. However, if you're looking at the number at the bottom part, well, that's about 54 then. So not only do you have to look at what numbers it goes through, but you've got to be a little bit smart about it, and you've got to know which of those numbers is actually the one that makes sense, and you've got to go with that. Well, I hope clearly you can tell that this is what you would call an acute angle. That's something else we're going to talk about in this video is classifying angles, and angles less than 90 degrees you ought to know are acute. And because you can tell this is an acute angle, you automatically know that 54 degrees is the measurement that you're going to choose. You're not going to go with the bigger number if you know you've got an acute angle. So that's how you use a protractor to measure an angle, or one way at least. And before we go on and talk about the other way, let's make sure you know the notation associated with giving the measurement of an angle. Whenever you're trying to tell what the measurement of an angle is, how many degrees the angle is, you don't just write the name of the angle that's part of it. You write the name of the angle with a lowercase m in front of it, which means the measure of. This says the measure of angle ABC equals 54 degrees. And remember the way you name angles, we could have easily said this is the measure of angle B or the measure of angle CBA. But no matter what you name it, 54 degrees is the measure. Well, briefly, I want to talk to you about another way that you can use a protractor to measure an angle because this leads into what the protractor postulate talks about. It turns out that you don't always have to measure angles by putting, uh, well, you always have to put the vertex at the crosshairs right there, but you don't always have to put one of the sides along either one of the zeros right there. You can place an angle however you want on a protractor, such as what you see right here. Now, if you decide that you want to place an angle this way, where you just have the vertex at the crosshairs and nothing else is lined up in any special way, then what we're going to do is something similar to what we did with the ruler postulate back a couple sections, if you recall. What we're going to do is we're going to think of every number on the protractor as being a coordinate, kind of like on a curved number line, if you will. And what we're going to do then is we're going to look at each side of the angle, and we're going to see what number or what coordinate does each side of the angle pass through. And so we'll assign C a coordinate. I'll, I'll just call it coordinate C, what this ray BC passes through. And we'll say the point that the ray BA passes through is going to have a coordinate called A. And all we're going to have to do is we're going to have to find the difference between those coordinates, or rather the absolute value of the difference between those coordinates, such as this. So let's suppose that point A has the coordinate 
136. You can either choose the bottom row of numbers to use for both coordinates or the top row of numbers, but you have to be consistent whenever you're measuring an angle this way. I'm going to use the bottom row, and let's say this is about 136 coordinate. And then if I look at the side of the other angle, well, then I can go ahead and use the bottom row again I need to, and let's say that that's at about 27 right there. And so the way we would find out what the measure of that angle is simply we would find the difference between those two things. So the difference between 27 and 136, and then take the absolute value of that result just because you want to make sure you get a positive angle measure. And so that would tell us the angle ABC is 109 degrees. Okay, so at this point we've talked about measuring angles and we've talked about naming angles. We're going to get onto the third part of goal one for this section and that was classifying angles. And I'm actually going to throw a little bit of all of these things in at the same time. The example here says to use the diagram to find the measure of the indicated angle and then classify the angle. And so if there's going to be an indicated angle, let me give you an indicated angle. Let's refer to angle KVM. Now, I hope you notice that there's several angles within this picture. Um, well, I'd count them, but there's probably more than what you would expect. Let's just go ahead and look at the ones that I've indicated to you. Angle KVM, remember the first part talks about a point on one side of the angle, then the vertex, then a point on the other side. So here's angle KVM right there. And luckily for us, we don't have to worry about the protractor postulate in this case. Well, not that that's difficult to use. But you can notice that ray VM, one side of that angle, is going through zero. And so in order to determine what the measure of the angle is, all we're going to have to do is see what coordinate does the K pass through. Now, it's not perfect, but it's basically 90 right there, isn't it? So we could say that the measure of angle KVM is 90 degrees. And then based on the measure of an angle, an angle can be classified in one of several ways. And I think that you know what a 90 degree angle is called already without me having to tell you much. A 90 degree angle is always classified as a right angle. So angle KVM, 90 degrees, its measure is, and it's a right angle. I need to put a little measurement symbol right there to say its measure is 90 degrees. Very good. Now let's try another angle in this picture. How about angle MVL? All right, now you see that starts here. It goes to the vertex V, and it goes this way. Well, again, one of the sides of the angles happens to be going through the zero, so we just have to look at the coordinate that the other one goes through, which is either 30 or 150. But I hope you can tell that this angle is much bigger than 90 degrees. And so we're going to use the larger of the two numbers in that case then, and we'll say that the measure of angle MVL is 150 degrees. All right. And then how do you classify an angle that's 150 degrees? Well, really not just the fact that it's, it's not for specifically 150 degrees, but there's a classification for any angle that's between 90 and 180 degrees. Any angle between 90 and 180 degrees, not including either of those end boundaries, by the way, is called an obtuse angle. Pretty certain you're familiar with that. So the big angles, they're obtuse. All right, we're going to go through two more angles here just so that you see all the classifications that you can give, really. Now, this one's an interesting one right here. Angle PVM is the next angle that we're going to measure and classify. And uh, the reason I say it's interesting is because, well, if you look at P, it's there, the vertex V is there, and then M is there, aren't those three points collinear with one another? And so how do you have an angle if the two sides are collinear with one another? Well, if the two sides of an angle are collinear with one another, what that means is that you have a straight angle. That's what that's called. So that's the classification already. And I think you probably know how many degrees are in a line, and it'd be easy enough to show you here. If we said this side is at the zero, well, then this side has to go through the 180, doesn't it? The measure of angle PVM is 180 degrees, and any angle that's, P that's 180 degrees is a straight angle. like so. All right, now we've talked about a right angle, KVM. We talked about an obtuse angle, MVL. And we've now talked about a straight angle, PVM. I'm pretty certain you know the fourth classification. Let me show you an example of an acute angle. And here it is, angle LVK. Now, you see LVK. 
This angle isn't lined up so that we can just say one side is a zero and we're going to look at the other coordinate. We're going to have to use the protractor postulate in order to find the measure of this angle. So remember to do that, we want to assign coordinates to both sides of the angle, the numbers as they pass through. And I've been calling this one 90 out there. I'll continue to do that. And let's just say we're using the top row of numbers, and we'll call this one 30. And so the measure of angle LVK would be the absolute value of the difference between 90 and 30. And 90 minus 30 is 60. So the measure of angle LVK is 60 degrees. And I've already told you it's acute. And remember that an acute angle is any angle that's between 0 and 90 degrees. All right. Well, thank you very much for your attention here. Hope you've got a good idea of how to measure angles. And remember, you need to watch the next video about the protractor postulate. Well, actually, we just covered that, about the angle addition postulate to be ready for section 1.4.